a successful reminder of the Beijing hackathon. Um, uh, and then we have the top level versus subproject discussion to resolve. And then there's the performance and scalability work group proposal that Mark has teed up that we reviewed at the, the Hackfest, but um, not everybody was there. Um, <clears throat> um, I guess we could get started with the, the recap. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh I'd be happy to try to jump in and give a recap of that. And then sure. uh, if anyone else who was there wants to wants to give that. So uh, had a productive two days of approximately 65 uh, participants. Uh, had about 80 registered and, and 15 no-shows. Among that 65 was a nice mix of uh, familiar faces and new, new faces. Um, uh, we spent much of the first day, I'm pulling up my agenda notes here, <laughs> um, much of the first day talking about um, kind of the path forward uh, for Fabric um, to get from here to 1.0, uh, then talking a bit about um, a governance proposal. Um, within, right now, this is a Fabric level governance proposal um, uh, that, uh, you, you know, it's not a, a TSC wide uh, thing yet, but it's something we could think about down the road uh, for module ownership. Um, to try to accelerate some of the, the pace of change through uh, review and, and that sort of thing, um, and it's a it's a hard it's a hard issue for sure. Um, we uh, also spent some time talking about the hyperledger.org uh, landing page, kind of the way that we talk about our projects uh, and uh, and kind of represent them. And, and I'll bring that up actually in the in the top level versus sub project conversation later. Um, uh, but that was a presentation from Greg. He also talked a bit about what we're doing at, at the consensus conference and others. Um, also had some great initial con presentations from some of our new projects uh, from Burrow. Uh, uh, just a really uh, terrific deep kind of overview uh, uh, and, and uh, um, uh, as well as Composer. Um, and I know that the Sawtooth and Burrow devs, uh, Dan and Ben, <laughs> spent a lot of time and Nick uh, uh, with each other looking at opportunities to, to integrate the two. Uh, and, and that was really great to see. Uh, and uh, let's see, there was also um, a conversation with the white paper uh, moving that forward and, and, and how we might represent that out to the world. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, so conversations like this, um, really a lot more conversations than hacking. Um, I got positive feedback on that. Uh, um, I suspect there's probably negative feedback that wasn't sh or negative uh, sentiment that was that wasn't shared just because it, some people I think might have come expecting to open their laptops and start coding, but I think a lot of these issues were were deep ones for us to to, to really kind of churn on, um, and especially with so many of the projects now. I mean, it's not just Fabric; it's it's also Sawtooth and and Eroha on this path to 1.0, um, on their own independent path, that, that these conversations, even if they were project specific, I think ended up being pretty helpful to everyone else. Um, and I should also mention there's a terrific presence there from uh, the uh, indie developer, developer community and, uh, and Vipin as well, kind of led a, a very meaningful conversation on, on how this will tie to, hopefully tie together some of the identity um, thinking across the different projects. So. No decisions made, of course. That's not the point of the, the hack fest, uh, but uh, um, but it was great to see everyone there. Any other thoughts or comments people wanted to share? No, I mean I I, I share the sentiment. I thought it was um, very productive. That was good. That was good to have a lot of activity from a number of the projects, not all of them, but it was. Um, rather diverse, which is good. Um, and we did have some meta conversations that I think were um, were also valuable, the whole discussion around the maintainer discussion and the, the branching discussion. I think others benefited from it. It wasn't just for the Fabric team, I think, in terms of the various proposals and, and the, the merits, discussion of the merits of the various approaches, I think was good. Okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to ask Todd to sort of uh, catch us up on uh, Beijing again, remind us all, all what's going on and uh, yep. the planning and so forth for that. 
Yeah, so there was just a discussion around whether the hackathon should be one day or two day. We've been discussing with the community in China. It sounds like for, for sure two day is the preference. Uh, so we've been working through the date patterns. Um, what we've decided and are recommending is that we would do Saturday, Sunday, which is the 17th and 18th for the hackathon. Uh, that will feed into the Hackfest, which will run Monday, Tuesday, which is 19th and 20th. Uh, in addition, we have a blockchain and Hyperledger track at uh, LinuxCon Beijing. Uh, we've just finalized the sessions for that as of this morning. So we're just going to confirm with all the speakers. Uh, otherwise, get that announced uh, in the next day or two. But just uh, main thing is calling for any objections to that date pattern. Otherwise, uh, we're ready to move forward with that. And we can get the registration link out for the Hackfest later today, uh, and then the hack hackathon uh, shortly. So I'm curious to know, um, you know, we've had a lot of notice of this. Um, just, uh, I, I don't actually, I don't know how many of the TSC is on the call. Do we have a uh, seven of 11 right now? So we're one try of quorum. I'd just be curious to get a sense um, from those are, that are on the call now, then who <clears throat> who's who's thinking of going um, me. <laughs> Start it off. Uh, Brian, I will go for sure. Um, and and we I, we know that we'll have participation from the the technical working group China. I don't know, Victor. It looks like you're on the phone call. Um, do you do you plan to be able to make it? Um, okay, Victor might not be able to speak. Nope. Um, now, he's, now he's live. My, uh, my status probably depends on a number of things. So uh, <laughs> if release one is out, then uh, probably a better possibility, but otherwise uh, it may be more difficult. I'm sorry, Victor, does that mean you are be able to? That was Ben. That was Ben. Oh, that was Ben. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, it's Ben. Hey, okay, hey Brian, I noticed you mentioned my name. Uh, I didn't hear the question very clear. Can you repeat? Did you plan to be at the hackathon at, in Beijing? Uh, yes, sure. I will be there. Okay. And I, and I think in general, you know, the China community will be able to make it there. Um, uh, and, and I think it's important to try to bring them together into, into our other processes. Um, uh, so I, I realize that it, it won't necessarily be a, a critical mass of the technical steering committee um, or a, a quorum of the TSC, which I, I think is okay. Uh, what I would like to do, um, since there is this am admittedly am ambitious notion that the hackathon um, uh, is geared towards bringing in new contributors into our projects by having them focus on outstanding bugs and sample code and documentation and that sort of thing. Um, and then use the Hackfest as a way to integrate those ideas into, you know, basically handle those, those CRs uh, and, and, and upstream them. Um, that if we have participants who know that they won't be able to make it, but could contribute the time either in their own time zones during both of those events, um, or, uh, or, or even, you know, later at night or early in the morning, um, that would still be extremely valuable. Um, and I think one thing we might try to do is, is make sure that we, we be as virtual about this as, and as we, as we can be, um, uh, I, that might be one way to also help, help bridge this, but I really do appreciate the fact that Chris is traveling there. That looks like Arno is also planning to go. Um, and, uh, I, 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 I think this is important to, to Hyperledger as a global project. I just keep making that pitch. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Todd or Brian? Okay, if not, let's move on. So <clears throat> the next, uh, pardon, pardon me, the, the next part of the, dis, uh, of the discussion is actually something that I think we need to start coming to conclusion on and making some decisions and whether that is just directing to go off and, and you know, refine some of the uh, TSC material that talks about life cycle and, and so forth um, to clarify project and sub project. 
Um, but I think we were sort of um, growing uh, consensus, but I didn't sense that we were quite there yet. And um, uh, on on the sorry, Brian, let me finish the, the, the summary here so people can catch up. Uh, that <clears throat> Hart had a, um, uh, you know proposed of essentially you know es uh, essentially establishing some sort of a dependency graph amongst the various uh, projects for when a project is brought forward to be presented for incubation that uh, rather than having things called projects or subprojects or what have you that we um, from a technical side of things from the TSC perspective that we simply establish that there are certain interdependencies uh, amongst the projects and that if there is a if there is an established interdependency um, between projects when something's brought forward that the uh, maintainers of that uh, dependent project, uh, I'm sorry, depended project, um, would weigh in on the proposal and, and its merits and so forth um, as, as an input to the TSC making a decision because obviously they would be in a better position, more informed and so forth to, to, to decide on the merits and so forth of, of a proposal. Um, that said, then there's the marketing side of things, which is that, uh, you know, how, how the Hyperledger uh, organization, how Brian and his staff, um, Jessica and Greg and so forth, go off and essentially market the notion of an umbrella organization that has a number of different projects. Um, and how do we, how do we um, you know, how do we market that? How do we present that to the rest of the world without creating confusion um, about uh, and or angst about whether or not one or more projects because there's more sub projects has greater weight or whatever. So, so that's sort of where we're at. Um, I think Brian, you were, you were the one that had some concerns about the dependency. So I guess, I, and I know you wanted to speak, so I guess I'll turn it over to you next. So uh, first of all, I think we had somewhat of a, of a consensus um, or uh, at least um, uh, an idea at the uh, the hack fest that I thought would help clarify at least on the marketing side um, that there seemed to be um, uh, support for the idea that when we when we provide our list of projects to the outside world uh, you know as people land at hyperledger.org um, that doesn't that list of projects doesn't necessarily need to reflect the organizational view one that has for example some of the SDK projects as independent units that report mm -hmm. in the TSC um, that instead we can present a product oriented view. So, um, you know, fabric SDKs uh, would live within the pages associated with fabric rather than presented at that kind of, kind of, uh, you know, front, front end level. You know, that would yeah. um, slightly slim down the list of projects today from nine to seven. Um, uh, but I think I would still characterize these as independent projects with independent maintainerships, et cetera. Um, the, I'm, I'm sensitive to the concerns about the TSC being able to adequately reevaluate the technical merits of projects as they come in, um, uh, and if they if they seem you know if there's if there's a high volume of them, uh, and certainly I think we don't want you know 300 projects under Hyperledger uh, this year, or we want do want some rate limiter of some sort. My concern about the dependency graph is, let's say somebody does want to start a um, you know electronic healthcare records project. I know that getting a little more ambitious than we've talked about or sector specific than we've talked about but go with me here uh, and that's dependent upon uh, fabric and uh, indie um, uh, at least at least at launch um, uh, without necessarily you know committing to porting to the other frameworks or, or anything like that um, I'm just not sure that I you know, I didn't want that those sub projects had to approve that addition of a project. So they can certainly weigh in, they can certainly inform, and that would help the TSC in its judgment. Um, I think the, the TSC's uh, focus should be primarily on scope, primarily on appropriateness. Is this a worthy and valuable addition to the portfolio? Um, uh, and, and that's challenged, obviously, when it's something like the SDKs. Um, uh, but I think it's also, also ultimately a governance question too. Do we have the right processes to adequately oversee, you know, not seven projects, nine projects, or fifteen? Um, and a final point I want to raise on that is, you know, there are structures such as Apache's adopted in terms of regular reporting to the TSC. 
uh, uh, in a structured way on, you know, developer diversity, on releases, that sort of thing. And I think if we were to introduce something like that so that the TSC calls once a month, we review report outs in the structured form on some different projects, it'll feel like a more manageable um, answer. So um, I, I, I just wanted to add that bit to the discussion here. I don't, I, I, I think there's, we're a bit closer to conversions on, on many of these issues. Um, don't know that there's a proposal for voting on yet, but I uh, just wanted to hear others' thoughts on that and then uh, maybe we can advance this this week. So Brian, are you suggesting um, that at least part of this becomes um, a reflection of the reporting structure as well? Um, so the uh, fabric-related SDKs would be part of the fabric report? Is that what I heard you say? Uh, what you heard me say was that um, when we when we talk about how we market these projects, then then you know the outputs from the fabric SDK projects would be part of the fabric pages. Um, uh, but from an organizational TSC oversight perspective, what we voted on and approved were these projects as independent ownerships okay. reporting to the TSC as separate projects. Perfect. Now this okay, is so a bit a of a, the, a separate report for yeah. each one of the groups. Yeah, and you know, and this is this is a bit of a complexity, right? Because uh, it's simpler when you say a project is a project, and that's how we present it to the public and how we manage it internally. But uh, but I think I'm sensitive to the notion of, you know, if some of these are so specific to to you know, if they're paired, I think I prefer the term paired than dependency, because you could have a, a fisheries supply chain project that's probably way too specific, but <laughs> a fisheries supply chain project specific to sawtooth. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, they're not paired in the same way that SDKs for Sawtooth or SDKs for Fabrics might be. I, I understand your difference, but I guess the question would be like a SDK in a specific language for a project is different than an actual implementation using one of the projects, right? And I think that's sort of what you're trying to make sure you differentiate. Hey, Chris, we're hearing your typing in the background. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Sorry. Would you be able to mute for a minute? Well, why are you yeah, so I angry can... today? Can... Uh oh. <laughs> that's not The only good. way I can hear is if I'm unmuted, unfortunately. So. Yeah, my, my biggest concern is I want to make sure that governance of the projects is direct between, you know, the project leadership and the TSC and isn't filtered through another project. Um, the Because that's an easy way for those, you know, they, we've used the term sub-projects and I kind of don't like that term. Those are uh, um, discouraged in Apache, even if there are instances where that term is used over there. The, if you have too many layers of, of indirection, that feels like bureaucracy, and it's an easy way for those projects to feel like redheaded stepchildren and forgotten about. Um, and and so, as long as we recognize that we need that direct reporting relationship between the maintainers on those projects and the TSC, um, then how we present it to the outside world, we can have flexibility around. Yeah. Um, so I just I just said in the comments, I think there are kind of two separate issues here that we are discussing. One is the kind of the the project governance structure <laughs> and I think at least on the email list there was wide consensus for maintaining a flat project structure. Um, so that that seems to be fine as is. The other kind of sub issue I think here was the project proposal document and that a lot of people were concerned that it was becoming just an enormous amount of work for the TSC to review, you know, all of these new projects as they came in, and it might not be feasible to do so if the projects keep coming on at a steady rate in the future. And the solution that seemed to be most popular on the email list was to require uh, project proposers to have kind of experts or or related developers you know, sign off on the project in the project proposal. So, you know, um, if I was proposing a Fortran 
SDK for Sawtooth Lake, I could say, you know, hey, Mick, hey, Dan, you guys are Sawtooth Lake guys. Um, you know, here's my proposal. Take a quick look at it. And they do, and they say, oh, yes, that's that's great. We have a d demonstrated need for, for more Fortran code, so we're going to do it. And this way, like Chris and Ben and all the Fabric guys don't have to take as deep of a dive into the project. Uh, so, so I think those are the two issues here. And I think the first one we can just kind of leave as is, but it might be nice to change the project proposal text to require some, uh, some kind of expert sign off. That's all. And I, and I think, uh, in, you know, we could, uh, yes. And, um, you know, many, uh, processes like this, like in Apache, do require um, kind of a mentor uh, for projects in incubation to have been previously involved in other Apache projects, um, something like that, at least from a process and, and incubation point of view, uh, could also be helpful in ensuring that, you know, in helping increase the confidence of the TSC that the project will come in and, and grow in the right direction. Um, so I think I think we could add, um, you know, expert review or endorsements um, uh, to uh, to the project template for sure. I totally agree with this slide because this really is the best practice. And it's great and that it provides extra credibility to the higher sign quality that dots you have the you know eyes and the dots and T's crossed and all the good stuff in terms of technology understanding and the reasons therefore it needs to be done. So it makes it certainly easier to say for the TSC and any others in the quality to um, endorse and sign off. Okay. Leonard, that was pretty ch challenging, I think, for most people to hear, but it sounds like you were supporting the idea of endorsements and sign offs. Absolutely, Brian. Yes, I have a net this morning. Sorry. <laughs> but yes, you're right. Terrific, thanks. I think we can wrap up um, this point for now. And um, uh, it, it, there's some instruction here for for myself to, and and I think others to kind of come back at the next TSC with a with a more specific proposal. So um, if everyone's okay, uh, or if there are there any any last words on this before we get to the uh, working group proposal. Chris, should we move on? Chris might have forgotten to unmute himself. Um, so, uh, Mark, do you want to talk about the this tool? Is just the... in, just infuriating. Sorry, it's just <laughs> a piece of every all tools suck. It's just all of them. every <laughs> single goddamn. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Chris. <laughs> well, you could, uh, you, but you can't just sort of bring the thing to the fore. It has to hide and, oh, God. Anyway, um, so, yes, <laughs> I was saying, next up, and I think, Todd, you said we were at Quorum? Yes, That's correct. Time. Yeah, we are. Awesome. Okay, so, Mark, you're up, and um, I know we presented your proposal at the, uh, the Hackfest, and I think it was well-received, but uh, I think there was a few... Um, from the TSC who weren't present. And so for their benefit, if you wouldn't mind sort of um, reprising your your pitch. Sure. Um, well, thank you for the time first off. Um, I am the performance and scale team at Red Hat. So this is an area of great interest to me anyways. Um, but, you know, the discussion we had, um, I had floated a proposal out to the TSC, um, hoping everyone had had a chance to read it. But basically, um, you know, I tried to keep that somewhat, you know, more as a guideline to, to start the discussions. Um, and going off of some notes that Tracy had here to, to cover sort of what we discussed, um, you know, we had a good discussion if this should be a working group or just come in as a project. And I think we, you know, my, my personal feeling was I proposed it as a working group so um, we could go and work you know, the structure of a working group would allow us to better work across other working groups. Um, and my expectation has always been that there'll be at least one project that comes out of this. Um, 
and the fact that it starts as a working group, you know, I think the concern is we don't want to study this to death. We want to get rolling and, and start on uh, some code. And I think, you know, I, I don't see this being a working group as, as stopping that. Um, you know, from what I've observed in Hyperledger, you don't say I want to start a project and then start with code, start coding. You you start with code and, and come in and say we'd like to submit this as a project. So I think we'll be able to do that. Um, on the notes here were that we thought, you know, people from each project would, would have the ability to sit in. Um, and of course, this is going to be open to anyone who wants to contribute. And, and there are people, you know, I've, I've received several emails from people that weren't able to be in DC that want to want to work with this as well. Um, it seems like there'll be some companies that will be able to donate some existing code potentially. Um, and one of the things we want to do with this is is not have a single metric, but define you know what metrics we think are, are important mm -hmm. um, and be able to provide a guide eventually that um, you know as hyperledger versus um, God sorry this long day as fabric versus sawtooth um, you know they're they're not intended for the same same use cases per se um, and you know even bring in ethereum based stuff and be able to say look if you want this particular performance characteristic, this is the project you should go with. Um, so I think that's more or less the highlights. I guess is there anything I, I, I missed that people wanted to bring up? Uh, one one thing I would say is that um, this, this is great. Uh, so you know, I've been looking for a way to uh, kind of like establish some benchmark or something from the performance point of view. So um, uh, kudos to you for uh, initiating this and uh, get it going. Um, the thing that I like to see is perhaps uh, not necessarily recommending you know, which project to use or based on the performance characteristics, characteristics but but more because, you know, um, our base project, you know, Sawtooth Lake or Euro or, or Fabric, each of them um, has various different configurations, right? It's, it's very rich in configuration. And because of that, certain configurations would meet certain uh, requirements. Um, so maybe somehow we establish a, a base a benchmark and from that we work out different configurations and you know the, the performance characteristics of each configuration would be different and would meet certain uh, requirements um, and certainly you know we can we can compare between different projects but I think different configuration would be more important uh, just my point of view so ben are no, you I suggesting we use it as a way of comparing configurations within a project rather than using it as a means to compare between projects right right which is to have um you know um, multiple uh, different configurations in each project so so the onus of creating the benchmark applications goes back to each of the platforms. So um, I know we have we have some internal packages, and I don't know what the current status is, with, and Dan could inform that more, but we have some packages that we use for doing benchmarking of our own code. Um, are you suggesting that we provide those through the working group? I mean, it, I, I see one role of this working group being something similar to what the architecture group is doing and that there's sort of a there's a little bit of consistency checking um, to make sure that it when it's appropriate we compare apples to apples um, but there's but there's a lot more um, call it sanity checking in that role of making sure that the benchmarks are that we propose from each project are, are reflected right Yeah, no, I think it's a good point to be able to compare configurations, and and that's one of the things I do as part of my you know normal day job, 
is you take the benchmarks and you know you try different configurations to see what gives better performance, things like that. Um, and we tend to focus when we talk mostly on performance, but scalability is also a big part of this. You know, what happens when you need to add 10 more servers or, you know, 100 more X? Um, you know, I think in most of the blockchain cases, performance goes down. You know, your total throughput will go down as things have to compare. So, um, you know, I want to make sure we don't overlook the scalability aspect of this as well. Because that yeah, will I, become a... Go ahead. Now, listen, I told you that the blockchain and also we have to show scalability covers. Scalability in a cloud environment, as opposed to say just um, uh, the price of service. Hey, this is Raleigh other... from DDCC. Hey, Raleigh. Um, is there a hey? Hey, so do you do you envision that we'll take up a business use case, and uh, that's how we'll evaluate across? A business use case that works across these various platforms and then do the performance and scalability or these are very technological use cases for you to e evaluate the performance and scalability um well that was one of the side discussions we had afterwards was you know we need to make sure that the benchmarks would come up with a representative so i could see different benchmarks for different use cases um, and I think that's part of the goal of the of the working group is to go through and identify those, which, you know, and that that will evolve over time too as new use cases come up or something like that. So we're talking about a, a business use case, not like a a technical use case. Well, I'm thinking like. Um, you know, an IOT versus financial transactions. Is that what you mean, or do you mean very specific business cases? Right, like a, like in financial world, you know, we'll apply this business use case across these various platforms, which has enough uh, complexity that, I guess, which, which has enough characteristics for us to measure the performance and throughput or scalability. Right, but that's going to be not so much a business case as much as it, the business case informs the configuration that needs to be satisfied and then there's some you know common computation that needs to be done from a smart contract perspective at the various scales and then you come up with numbers i don't think that it necessarily is a solution you know is this fit for a particular solution i, I think again it needs to come down to because because again it's not just about finance or fintech or or IoT or, you know, it's it's all of the above. And, you know, I think, you know, when we think about, you know, like cloud benchmarks and spec and so forth, they are, <clears throat> those things are not business domain kind of problems. They're scale problems. How many VMs so can you spin up in a minute, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that the... Uh, I'm glad that SpecWeb conclusively proved that uh, Java as a server-side language is appropriate for running a pet store. Um, uh, yeah, and right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's quite like the service level agreement indicates that interaction or that agreement and all that uh, warranty between the business customer and the technology solution to implement to satisfy the customer's needs. So there is that esoteric relationship. But as far as performance goes, we need to ensure that the technology and the solution in place um, is satisfactory, performs satisfactory in any environment, and therefore it scales to provide that performance in any environment. Right. By the way, I'm, I'm also very excited about the prospect of this working group, including people and, and thinking from uh, DLTs outside of hyperledgers. Um, there are still uh, yeah, some commercial DLTs out there, um, uh, and uh, you know, coming up with a vocabulary and it's for describing, uh, you know, uh, how, how to even characterize performance in a DLT setting is something I don't think anyone's really tackled yet. So that's where there's some pioneering work to do here, and and I think why leading it with conversation and making it a working group rather than leading it with code first and making it a project is the better way to go. Right. Although I, I do tend to think that, you know, the sooner we can get, and I think, Mark, I think this is your intention as well, the sooner we can get to starting to write code and 
have a project that's informed by and and sort of joined at the hip with the working group is is really the right thing. Yeah. And Mark, when I read your proposal, um, the the focus that's in the written proposal is on coming up with metrics, um, and and that's, I mean, that would be a precursor to um, to benchmarks and things like that, but. Um, I think coming up with definitions of those to which each one of us could write our own set of benchmarks at the first step is a really good idea. Okay, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. And in addition to that, there are lots of industry benchmarks and metrics out there already, actually. So we can start with those if they need to be customized further for the blockchain. That's one of those. Chris, I suggest we might be ready for a vote. Yep, I, I think so too. Todd? All right, sounds good. Uh, walking through quickly, Arno. Yes. Ben? Yes. Chris? We? Oui. Greg? Yep. Hart? Yes. Mick? Yes. Morali? Yes. Tamash? Yes. All right, that's approved unanimously. All right, awesome. Mark, you're uh, all set. Um, you should be able to create a wiki page and um, go for we'll it. get a mailing list set up for this in too. And uh, we should have, well, I think, once every two weeks phone calls is what folks talked about at the Hackfest, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. And we cool. should probably bootstrap uh, well, well, we can keep this a conversational working group. <clears throat> um, official, you know, maintainers or official members of that working group yet, but uh, might be worth formalizing that later down the road. But for now, let's just keep it a conversational working group and and see what it produces. Sound good? Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. All right. That, all right. Any. Chris, any other comments or agenda items? Uh, no, I think um, that was all we had uh, teed up. So if there are no other agenda items, people can have time back on their calendar. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, thanks again for a great Hackfest. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, Mark, if you have anything you need, just let us know. Will do. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.